So now we're going to start a blank, um, fresh Unity project and try making a scene like this together. Um, we're going to use uh, both the terrain tool and some of the 3D game objects to, to generate a, um, a simple but kind of uh, fantastical uh, interior and exterior landscape. Um, so we're going to close this project by um, making sure we exit. And then I will show you how to start up a, uh, a fresh Unity project. If you're opening an existing project, like something I've given you to download, uh, you would do that here, open, and then just point to um, the folder, the, you know, because a Unity project is just a folder. Um, but we're going to start a brand new project. So we need to make um, a template. We, it, it wants to know, is this a 2D th uh, project or a 3D project, or do you want to use one of these many templates they provide? Um, so we're just going to go with straight up 3D for now. And then over here under project settings, we want to give it a name. Um, so tutorial project one is what I'm going to choose. You want to pick something that is um, useful to you. And then you want to pick the location. And I have... Um, mine set up as my uh, my computer documents folder and then um, I have a folder named unity projects and I highly encourage you to do the same um, don't just throw this anywhere you know if you're working on school computers in a lab you want an external hard drive on that hard drive you should have a folder called unity projects and then inside unity projects is where you make all of these unity project folders um, so uh, I'm going to hit create project and it will do what it needs to do to create a new unity project. It's going to, um, put some of the basic, um, building blocks in place. It's going to make that folder and, um, the subfolders that it needs inside of there. So this is what unity looks like, uh, when you haven't opened a pre-made project. This is sort of a blank slate unity experience. And um, it's a little intimidating. It's like staring into the void, but um, it does come with a, a main camera and a sun, what they call a directional light. Um, it comes with a sky box um, and that's about it. That's all we got. Um, so uh, down here in your assets, the only folder that comes pre-built for you is a folder called scenes. Inside it, there is just one scene and that's this one. Um, and so the way Unity handles um, uh, scenes is if you know Adobe Premiere, the metaphor would be like sequences there where, you know, for, for a while when you just make a couple of short projects, a sequence and a project sort of seem like the same thing, but you can actually have multiple sequences inside a Premiere project. Um, that's true in Unity too. You can have multiple scenes inside a Unity project. So um, the project really is the whole folder on your hard drive and all the stuff that's in there. The scene is uh, is any given world that you're building. If you were making a video game and it had multiple levels, um, it would have multiple scenes and a way to transition from one scene to another. Um, so we're going to start with this first scene and um, we're going to uh, see what it's like to put some objects in this space. So uh, first simple object I want to put in is just a cube, just for the sake of doing it. Um, we're going to right click in the hierarchy and go to 3D object and then cube. And the cube appears just sort of in the center of wherever you happen to be looking. Um, and the reason I point that out is if you go to its transform, you'll notice it's not at zero, zero, zero um, by default. This can be confusing sometimes um, because sometimes you'll make a new object and it'll just be like lost. It'll be like way off in the distance and you don't know why and you don't know where it is. Um, so I encourage you to be in the habit of as soon as making a new object, you also right click on the word transform in the inspector and reset. So that's going to put every new object you make, you know, each time you make a new object, you'll do that reset. It's going to put it at zero, 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 which is just a great starting place. So you can like know where it is, um, have something to work with. So I'm, uh, I've got this cube and I've put it at zero, zero, zero. Um, but I don't really want to make a cube. I kind of want to make a floor. 
Um, so I'm going to scale up the uh, X and the Z to 10 instead of one. Um, so now I've got a floor. So that's the very basics of how I would start building like um, a house or a, uh, you know, an architectural space, a geometric space, a simple plane. Um, actually, you can make a, a plane which doesn't even have sides. That's another way to start. But for now, we've got a, um, we've got like a concrete floor or something here. But I also want to be able to make um, something that looks more um, organic, more landscape-like, more exterior. Uh, and for that, we're going to use right-clicking in the hierarchy, going to 3D object, and choosing Terrain. And when you click Terrain, you will immediately notice the terrains are huge. <laughs> um, the outside world is, is enormous. Um, so by default, uh, we just made a, a 10 by 10 square floor here. Um, and that's uh, these units that Unity works in, incidentally, are meters. So for those of us in the United States, that's about three feet. Um, so this is a 30 foot by 30 foot floor here. But this thing whew, is a thousand by a thousand. So that's 3,000 feet by 3,000 feet. And that's a lot of outside. Um, for my purposes, for this first um, demo project, I don't want it to be that big. I want to change it and make it smaller. Um, so the problem is you don't change the terrain size here under scale like you would with a normal game object. Um, we do that in a lower uh, component down here under terrain. And then you see all these icons here. We're going to go to the furthest right one that says terrain settings. And under that, there's all these settings. I'm honestly going to have a skip almost all of them, except down here, mesh resolution. We're going to change this to 100 instead of 1,000. And we're going to do it in the width and the length. So that's going to make a more manageable outdoor size. Um, you know, if you were making an open world experience that you wanted to be able to walk across for an hour, that's one thing. But for now, I just want a, a small kind of um, area to work with. And uh, so next, we're going to go back up to the transform. And now we're going to change the position. Um, since this is a hundred by a hundred terrain, um, we're going to move it negative 50 in the X and negative 50 in the Z. Uh, that's going to center it. And then we're going to go back up to where we found the icon for the settings, this gear, and we're going to go a couple to the left to the paintbrush to paint terrain. Um, so the first thing you can do with the paintbrush is raise or lower the terrain. Um, the brush shapes are going to be your kind of terrain shapes, the shape of your hills. Brush size is how wide, so whether it's a very small hill or a very large hill. Um, and then in, in the case of the razor lower, opacity doesn't really mean how see-through or not. It means how strong <laughs> this hill making is. So really, it should probably be intensity in this, in this case. So if we turn it up, one click makes a pretty big hill. If we turn it way up, one click makes an even bigger hill. If we turn it way down, um, then as you paint, you can make more subtle hills. Um, sometimes when it's turned up, the hills get very tall very fast if you're clicking and holding. Um, so you can um, experiment with that and make a terrain. The only thing you might notice is uh, all we can do now is raise terrain. And you might think, okay, well, what about the lower? So if you hold um, shift, like it says here, to lower, we can do that. And we can lower this back down. But you might think, uh, okay, I'd like to dig even deeper, right? But I can't. It, it only goes back down to sort of the flat. Um, and that is because our terrain height is set uh, to zero. So this is sort of our sea level and there's nothing beneath it. If we would like to be able to dig lower than this middle ground, then we have to go here. And instead of raise or lower terrain, we want to go to set height. 
So we're going to do in this world space, we're going to set height. And if you set height, uh, it's going to undo everything we've done so far. Um, it sort of starts fresh. So um, I'm going to set my height to 20. And then I hit flatten all. And so now my terrain has been raised up 20. Um, I'm going to then lower its position by 20. So it ends up in the same place I wanted it in the first place. And then I can change from set height back to raise or lower terrain. Now I can raise or by holding shift lower terrain. Um, and it'll go down to a limit of 20 units. So you can try other brushes. They'll give you different shapes. Some are very lumpy and organic. Some are very um, geometric. Even the ones that look silly like a star or something, though, you have to remember when you see it from the game perspective, we won't see it as a star. It'll look like a you know, kind of a flat um, plateau or something, like a wall jumping up, uh, or like the wall of a fort. Um, so uh, you can experiment and make what you want. Um, and then there's one more brush I would make you aware of. There's a smooth height brush, um, where just in case you got all jaggy and you didn't want to, you can kind of smooth some of the jagged nature of, um, of your terrain with the smooth height brush. Um, if you've arrived at what you feel like you're happy with, then we can move on from just shaping the terrain to painting it. So up here where I was on smooth height, I'm going to choose paint texture. So now that we're under paint texture, um, we would go to edit terrain layers and try to create a new layer. Um, only problem is it wants us to pick a 2D texture. And by default, we don't really have very many. There's the uh, checkerboard gray placeholder um, and a couple of other uh, default textures that Unity has in a blank project. But um, we want like something like rocks or grass or um, rainbows or <laughs> just any uh, something cool. And um, so we need those. We can either um, download them from the Unity Asset Store um, there are a lot of free texture packs, or uh, I can show you how to make your own textures in a um, in a future tutorial. But for now, I've got some example um, textures that some of which I've made, some of which I've downloaded, um, and I'm going to show you uh, how we would import those and then use them. So I've got them here um, in a uh, a different folder on my hard drive. I'm going to grab. Um, all of these and throw them into my Unity project. But first, for the sake of organization, I'm going to make a new folder. So I right click, create folder, and I'll give it a name. I'm going to call it textures. And this uh, textures folder is empty right now. But if I click on it and grab all of these, I can throw them in here. And um, not only are they in my project, but just as a reminder, they are now on my hard drive in, uh, inside that project in the exact same way. So here inside tutorial assets, um, textures has appeared and all of these project uh, files, all of these PNGs and um, texture images are uh, both in the project and on the hard drive. That's how Unity works. It's just a, uh, uh, basically a file manager down here. Um, so now we're going to get back to business and make that layer. So edit terrain layers, create layer. Now you got your choices from down here. Um, I'm going to start with the dirt. I can double click. And the first layer we create, it covers the entire terrain. The second layer we create uh, I'll go with grass this time, is on our brush. So you're going to want to select the layer you want to paint with. So we're going to select um, the grass. And then the paintbrush is still size, but now opacity actually is opacity. 
So if this is too extreme for you, you can turn down opacity and make like small areas of a little bit of grass, but still have the dirt show through. Um, so we're going to mix and match. I'll sort of do um, grass in this area. And then I will make like sort of a zone where it transfers with just partial opacity. So I've got some grassy areas and some more rocky areas in my terrain. And you can of course use any kind of image. Um, it doesn't have to be realistic. Uh, I've, I've gone for kind of cartoony realism here, but I could just as easily choose um, to go for uh, psychedelia or something and um, paint uh, paint rainbow textures on my on my surface. Um, so uh, the other thing that I want to make you aware of is each one of these textures is um, swappable. So if we decided later, oh, the rainbow is too much, it's going to be tile instead. You can um, change it by dragging the tile to uh, this, the diffuse. And now we haven't lost any of the painting area. We've just changed the texture that's applied to it. So if all of a sudden um, we wanted the grass to be the dirt um, and the dirt to be the grass, we can do that. Last thing I want to make you aware of is each of these layers has um, a couple of sliders here associated with it. Um, you can change the degree to which it's uh, metallic, which is its kind of reflective nature, um, how smooth it is, so things can look um, very glossy or not glossy. This is going to affect how light bounces off of the, the surface. But you can also change the tiling settings. Um, and why that matters is if we zoom in here to the grass, you can sort of see how often the grass texture is repeating. Um, if that's too often, if you'd like the grass to sort of be bigger, you can change the tiling size. Um, normally, I think you would want to change it uh, in the X and Y equally. Um, so that the aspect ratio of the original texture image doesn't uh, get warped. But in some cases, perhaps like with the rainbow, you might want to change things more in one direction than another um, because this texture uh, will look a lot different if we stretch it out in one direction and not the other. Finally, offset um, would allow you to sort of cycle through where exactly the texture is um, is looping or um, which part of the texture is hitting which part of the terrain. So if you really need a red stripe on a certain hill, um, you know, this will let you make that adjustment.